Good morning. I'm King County Executive Dow Constantine. Thank you for being here today as we mark National Human Trafficking Public Awareness Day. Human trafficking is the use of force or fraud or coercion to compel a person into any form of labor against their will. This is a lucrative and fast-growing criminal industry with an annual profit for victimizers estimated at $32 billion worldwide. And children account for half of the victims. So often when we think of human trafficking, we think of sex workers. But human trafficking can occur in any industry, including agriculture or construction, domestic service, restaurants, salons, massage parlors. Victims can be U.S. citizens or people from other countries trafficked into or out of King County. We must put a stop to it. That is why King County is launching its first campaign to raise public awareness of human trafficking. We'll have ads in six different languages placed on 200 metro buses across King County. In marking this day, we join communities around the world in letting traffickers know that we will not tolerate modern day slavery. You'll see the signs here. Among the potential situations these signs address are someone who has their passport taken away and is forced to work in order to get it back. Someone who was promised a job with good wages and then is forced to work for little or nothing. Someone who, due to language barriers, doesn't know that the law is on their side and that there is help for them to escape. The only way that we can stop human trafficking in our communities is by being vigilant. We can all help identify and report suspected cases of human trafficking. When we see something, we must say something. King County as a government is committed to helping end human trafficking. So throughout this year, we will promote awareness through this campaign. We will train our employees to identify trafficking, and we will create integrated responses to ensure that we are doing everything that we can to end trafficking. As a county committed to equity and social justice, we must put an end to human trafficking in our community. So call the National Human Trafficking Resource Center at 888-3737-888. That's 888-3737-888. To report, learn more, and understand how you can help be part of the solution. Call center staff members speak multiple languages and are standing by to provide help. I want to thank Gray Media, Titan Advertising, Clear Channel, the Washington Anti-Trafficking Rescue Network, Seattle Against Slavery, Horn of Africa Services, the New York City Office of the Mayor, and the Somali Mom Foundation, and other community partners for their contributions to help make this campaign a success. I also want to thank the many community organizations that provide support to victims. And I particularly want to single out Laura Hitchcock and the staff of Public Health Seattle and King County for their work on this campaign. And now here to talk about human trafficking is a law as a law enforcement priority is our King County Sheriff, John Urquhart. Thank you, Executive Constantine. And he gave you a very good definition of what human trafficking is. However, the Sheriff's Office really sees a very, typically sees a very small part of that, and that's the commercial sex trade, prostitution. And uh, as a former vice officer, vice detective who worked Pacific Highway South for many, many years, I know the effect that it has. But we've really made a, a huge shift, law enforcement has, on how we look at prostitution. In the old days, when I was out there, uh, we would uh, arrest a, a prostitute uh, as a suspect, take her to jail, and then pat ourselves on the back for cleaning up the neighborhood. And yes, we were doing that to a certain extent, but we'd go back the next day, and either she'd be back or more uh, of her uh, co-workers would be back, and we'd arrest them, and we'd take them to jail. Or we'd go to a massage parlor, and we'd arrest somebody and take them to jail. 
without really looking deeper at what was going on. And that viewpoint has evolved tremendously to where we are at today. And we realize, certainly, that prostitution is not a victimless crime. And all those suspects that we arrested for all those years are actually victims as well. And that's what we have to do. We have to, not only the police, but the rest of the government has to treat them as victims. And that's why I'm so pleased to see where we have evolved over these years and what we are doing now. And perhaps even more importantly, that we've got the rest of government to realize that as well. The Executive's Office, the King County Council, and that's why they're here today. That's why they funded this program. This hopefully will make a difference. It's another way of looking at a huge societal problem. I've said for years that we cannot, the police cannot arrest our way out of community problems, out of social problems. So this is a giant step forward to doing the right thing, and I'm, I'm committed to have the Sheriff's Office do that, thanks to Executive Constantine, thanks to the King County Council for realizing that. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Council Member Reagan Dunn from the King County Council. Thank you, Sheriff Urquhart. I'm Reagan Dunn. I serve on the King County Council, and I chair the Regional Transit Committee that has oversight over the Metro bus system. And I'm honored to be here today uh, as a part of this new public awareness campaign to highlight the battle against human trafficking. Washington State is known uh, as a national leader in human trafficking, of course, but we've got a long ways to go uh, and a lot of room for improvement, and we start on that today. I want to thank Executive Constantine, uh, for his work, Sheriff Urquhart for his work as well uh, on all the work they've done on this project. And as well, thank the members of the County Council who uh, co-sponsored this legislation with me, uh, Kathy Lambert, uh, Larry Phillips, Pete Von Reichbauer, Larry Gossett, and Julia Patterson, all instrumental in this effort. We know that human trafficking happens right here in King County, on our buses, at our transit centers. We know that it takes only 45 minutes for an unaccompanied minor girl to be approached by a pimp at Westlake Center. We know that. Right there in the heart of downtown Seattle, a short distance uh, away from where we are right now. It's estimated that between 300 and 500 children will be bought and sold in King County uh, just this year. And we also know that children as young as 11 uh, have been trafficked for commercial purposes. The state of Washington has always been a focal point for human traffickers uh, due to the number of key regional characteristics that we have, including the abundance of ports, uh, prox uh, proximity of the international border, uh, dependency on agricultural workers uh, in, in many parts of the state. So this campaign is a way to reach out to victims and potential victims, uh, as well as the general pu public who may see something on a bus or a transit center that just doesn't look right to them. And these ads will point people to where they can find help. As a former federal prosecutor who's been involved uh, in sex crimes prosecution, I can tell you that human trafficking is probably the, the least understood and least and most underreported crime that's occurring in Washington State today. We know that educating the public on what human trafficking is, how the public can make a difference, and getting information to trafficking victims on where to turn for help really works. We also know that public education is greatly needed. A 2008 report by a task force made several recommendations on what to do about human trafficking. The very first recommendation, public awareness. That's why we're working on this today. The report was issued in 2008, and it is simply time for this county to take the first step and educate the public. Uh, and so folks are going to be here today. You're going to hear from uh, Yasmin, uh, who is a, herself a, a, a survivor of human trafficking, and she'll talk a little bit about that as well. So uh, thanks again for everyone who's involved in this campaign. We're going to have more information added to this public awareness campaign moving forward. Uh, we will continue to step up and act where we can at the county council. We want to ensure that King County is doing all it can to protect everyone from these unspeakable crimes of human trafficking. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Yasmin Christopher. She is a second year law student at Seattle University. Uh, she is also a survivor herself of human trafficking. Yasmin, please come on up. Hi, thank you for letting me speak today. It's an honor to be here and to speak with people that are doing such amazing work. Um, my name is Yasmin Christopher. I'm a second year law student and I'm living proof of modern day slavery. 
My family was trafficked here in the late 80s from Bangladesh for the purpose of labor and sexual exploitation. There was really no term back then for what was happening. Uh, no, nobody really knew what trafficking was. Um, and if it were not really not for the diligence of, and care of the community and other law enforcement um, personnel that helped our family, I wouldn't be speaking here with you today. So that's why I would like to say that personal thank you. It was actually a Sheriff Lane Yeomans um, in Grace Harbor County that really didn't let this issue go when he came and um, saw what was happening to my family. So I began speaking up a few years back because I saw that our state had really picked up this issue but realized there were rarely survivors that were able to speak about it. Um, I think I have an amazing privilege that what had happened to my family happened when I was young enough so that I am able to speak in a way that's almost third person. Um, there's many survivors out there I've realized through my speaking and uh, just various, various events and things that I've participated in dealing with this issue that uh, trafficking has no face. It happens, I've met survivors internationally from India, from the Philippines, um, domestic house workers. My boyfriend actually, his aunt was a domestic house worker um, and, ind and involved in indentured servitude in Dubai. Um, I've met people that have been trafficked domestically, uh, county to county, state to state. Um, girls as young started, their parents started them when they were 12. I've met girls that were picked up at the mall at 16. Uh, so I speak to you, but I really speak on behalf of a lot of women, so, um, and men, actually, and, and that's another thing that is often not talked about in this trafficking issue, is that it really does affect every facet of the community. Um, I'm living proof of my father's sins and my family's strengths. My father was a trafficker and my mother was his child bride. He was able to provide false documentation and obtain travel papers for nine members of my family and moved them to a landlocked farm, a 65 acre landlocked farm in Oakville, Washington, where they were forced to work from sunup to sundown and often with no food um, and minimal clothing. There were no modern amenities like running water and electricity and he continuously physically and sexually abused children from six to 18 years old. He was able to move my family from Bangladesh to Pakistan before finally arriving in the United States and he actually did consulting with the United Nations and was working with the government of Bangladesh doing, doing socioeconomic reporting at the time that he was able to do all this. My father is white, he's educated, and he was very well respected. Um, that's how he was able to use or to manipulate my grandfather into selling him the American dream and uh, giving him his daughter and the other family members that he was able to bring over here. He graduated from the University of Washington with a PhD and even played in the Seattle Philharmonic. And I really, I, I speak about this because I really feel it is important for us to share what privilege means and how it is that so many people, um, you know, wealthy people, educated people are involved in this game and how easy it is to overlook it. Nobody seemed to question anything, although even if they did, there was really nowhere to go. So I'm just, I'm here to you, I'm here today to ask a, a call to action for the community to start getting involved because while I'm proud of our state, until the public gets on board and law enforcement really understands what it means to, to talk to survivors and to victims, which is why I really appreciate what the sheriff said earlier, um, it's important to realize that it's just, you, you can't, without empathy, you can't start to crack what's really going on. So I appreciate that. Um, I hope that we continue to see Seattle doing such great work. I know that Washington State is a leader in this uh, nation right now as far as taking on the human trafficking um, issue. So I hope that we do really start working together on this problem. I hope that if you see something, you say something, because at least if you were wrong, then it, you can have that, you can know that you spoke up. Because calling a number might seem like it's just something, you know, you might seem nosy, you might, you know, you might feel that uncomfortable feeling like, oh, am I, am I doing, am I interrupting something, am I making snap judgments, but you know, if you were right, you might allow somebody else to be up here speaking in a year, in 10 years, or allow their children to be doing the same thing. We have to hold ourselves and others accountable and strive towards understanding, respect, and love for our fellow people so that we can build efficient avenues for people to reach out and empower each of us to be better and expect better from one another. So I thank you again for letting me speak today, and I'm really excited about this campaign. Thank you.
Yeah, it's Y A S M I N. Last name is Christopher. Uh, C H R I S T O P H E R. What yeah. Was your dad? Where is he now? Um, he actually got uh, sentenced to four years. He only served 18 months. It was for an indecent liberties charge. And I'll come around and pass out. Um, we have a fact sheet actually on Yasmin with just kind of a bio filler and the correct spelling of her name. Um, but we also uh, just arrived from our traffic tie up we had this morning. We have Kathleen Morris from the Warren Network to talk about resources that are available, and I'll come around to media and pass them. Hi. Uh, my name is Kathleen Morris, and I represent the Washington Anti Trafficking Response Network. Um, we refer to that as WARN. WARN is a coalition of actually four agencies here in um, King County that provide direct services to victims of human trafficking. We also act as a co-chair of the Washington Advis Advisory Committee on Trafficking, which is a group of professional practitioners responding to human trafficking in this area. Um, and by professional practitioners, I mean uh, local and federal law enforcement, the U.S. Attorney's Office, um, as well as service providers who provide direct services to victims, and community members who raise awareness about human trafficking. So it's quite a multidisciplinary collaboration. Um, in, in serving victims and survivors of human trafficking, Warren provides intensive case management and access to the services that victims need in order to recover and move on with their lives. Um, in order for that to happen, we really do need the community to be aware of what human trafficking is in order to help victims and survivors access the services that are available to them. Without that link, um, there's no way for people to get help. A lot of the victims and survivors who we serve have been isolated. They've been trapped inside a residence or um, another location. They've been unable to reach out. With this campaign, we're hoping to reach not only potential victims and survivors, but also community members who may see something or see someone who's in need of help. Um, and that's exactly why we're very encouraged by this campaign. We're really hoping that people will become more aware and able to access services. And in calling that, that number that's on the, um, the campaign, you actually, a victim here locally can get directly connected with local services. So it is an 800 and a national number, but it, they will connect locally when somebody has a local need. So we want people to know that. Um, what do survivors need when they come out of a human trafficking situation? The list is endless and the, and the variety is endless. We actually never know what the next person who comes to us is going to need. Some of the basic things is safe and stable housing, which we help people access. Um, some, they may need access to food. Many of the people we serve are undocumented immigrants and have no access to food stamps or any other kind of public benefits. Um, and so we help them access those basic necessities as well as um, immigration and legal assistance, as well as counseling and medical health um, provision. We basically ask the people we're working with, what is it that you need? Um, and we have had a lot of people come to us because a community member noticed that something was wrong and had somehow heard of our program um, and connected the dots or heard of one of our, that one of our partners might be able to help a victim of human trafficking. And so this campaign is just yet another step in that direction of somebody saying, this person's been locked inside a home, they've been providing domestic service, they're not being paid appropriately, they're being abused, they're being threatened with deportation. Here's a, here's a number we can call to get you help. And really, the clients who we serve, they do the hard work. They really are the ones who reach out to, for help. We open the door to services for them, and they do all the hard work to really recover and rebuild their lives. Um, I was asked, um, you know, what kind of immigration issues are there involved with human trafficking? As I mentioned, a, a large number of the clients we serve are um, undocumented immigrants, and they do need access to immigration status. There is um, a federal law that provides immigration status to people who are victims of human trafficking, and we've had a lot of success working with Immigration and Customs Enforcement um, and Homeland Security Investigations in order to access those things for the clients we serve. So there is a path 
to um, recovery and to rebuilding the life of somebody who's been in a trafficking situation. And the only step that's often missing is getting from the exploitation to services. And we really hope that this campaign will connect those dots. Um, I think that's all I had to add. Is there anything that, any questions? Yeah. You keep saying people should be, community members should be on the lookout for signs. What are the signs? Well, I didn't say that, but <laughs> but yeah, there yeah there are signs, and I think King County has created a website with a list of signs. So, what I think what we can do now is probably just open it up to questions, and we have a fact sheet over here that's all passed out, and it also includes the list of signs and kind of the frequently asked questions. But um, but yeah, we can open it up for a few minutes for questions. Are there questions for any of the uh, five speakers today? Yes. Um, we have a mandate from the County Council to build this advertising campaign into our existing budget. Fortunately, our advertising is on our buses, and we set aside a certain amount for both internal uh, advertising and, and uh, um, public interest advertising. And so we've received the ads, uh, compliments of the City of New York, Mayor Bloomberg's office, and their advertising folks, which is um, a company called Gray, and we're very appreciative to them. So it is uh, just a marginal cost that's built into our Metro Transit budget. Have they done very similar outreach, yes. basically? My understanding is they've done very similar, including pretty much identical to the ads that we're going to be showing on our buses. Any, any early reaction from that city? I don't, I don't have that information, although there are probably some who do. Our expert here is Laura Hitchcock, and where is Laura gone? Oh, there you are. Um, and she is from our uh, Department of Public Health, Seattle and King County, and has been heading up the effort to put this together. And Laura is probably the person best equipped to talk about those details and is available to you. Other questions? Can you step up to the mic? Oh. Yes, yes me. What would you say to someone who was a victim of human trafficking? What would you say to them? What would you encourage them to do? Well, I would probably encourage them, geez, one thing. Um, are you talking about personally or as far as access to resources? Access to resources. If you, if you could give them advice, what would you say right. to them? Um, I would just say try to find a friendly face, honestly. Um, I mean, it's a really hard thing to do because you're talking about somebody that's probably been threatened, someone who's living under you know, different forms of fear, a choice is a really interesting thing, which is, you know, like a, when we were talking about sex trafficking, it's a little bit different than when we're talking about like labor trafficking is how, as far as how I would appeal to somebody. But I would just tell them to find their inner strength and find a friendly face and, you know, do what they feel comfortable doing. You can't really, I feel slightly uncomfortable saying what I would tell somebody of a, a victim of a specific situation other than that. Would you encourage them to go to come forward or to get to find help? Definitely, yeah. But I would encourage them to do so on their own terms. I mean, I think that telling somebody who's living in fear just to be bold and go do something is a very, you know, just I don't feel comfortable saying that. But I would encourage them to do so, yeah, at any chance that they felt comfortable. And there's hope. Oh, I mean, I think so. I, you know, I have a pretty good life. I think so. It's, it's just all. You know, it's all about when you can find yourself and how long it takes that empowerment to work. And for each person, it's different. I have women in my family that haven't been able to speak about it at all. And I have, you know, me and my aunt where we speak about it all around the state. So everybody's on their own, on their own time and on their own journey. Thank you. Are there others? Well, everyone will be available uh, to talk with you one on one, including Laura from the Department of Health, who's our expert. And I want to thank you all for being here today as we kick off this tremendously important initiative to end human trafficking. Thank you very much.